Hey guys, welcome to Behind the Scene TV. I'm your host, Angelina Wilson. The next case in Missing May is that of Charles Francis. He disappeared on April 9, 1979, which just so happened to be my father's 35th birthday. Um, He disappeared. Let me try to. Okay. Oh my goodness. The hell. Okay. April 26, 1979. Um, the boy's dad came out for a custody hearing. because he wanted to take custody of his son. He um, would take his son in his truck to make deliveries, but he would have to hide him during the deliveries because it actually wasn't allowed. Um, Investigators at first thought he was taken by someone that he knew, and it turns out they exhausted all leads in that, and that was not the case. Um, After Chris's disappearance, a 13-year-old boy in Costa Mesa was kidnapped by serial killer and child molester James Crummel. James Trotter was walking into school when he was snatched by Crummel, who lives less than a mile away from the team. Eleven years later, the killer called police to report finding charred remains off Ortega Highway. At first, investigators thought the remains were female, but dental records confirmed they were James Trotter. Crummel was convicted in 1997 of murdering Zipine. It wasn't his first murder conviction. He'd been convicted of murder in 1967. Of a nine-year-old boy in Arizona. Now, Costa Mesa is in California. This little boy, um, went missing in California. <clears throat> Detective Don Howell specializes in child abuse related homicide and child molestation cases. He has written two books on how to interview sex offenders. Sad that we need that. Um. He was seven years old, three feet tall, and 45 pounds. Um, Um, okay, someone came forward and thought that they might be Charles Francis. Um, oops, I keep getting out of frame. And he did look 
very similar. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. Police found a man and they asked him, is this you in the picture? And the man said he didn't think so. Uh, I don't know whether they got any DNA. Yes, they did. They took DNA and Um, because of this case, they made a cold case unit, which has already looked over 125 cases, which is amazing. Um, When everyone was re-interviewed, when the cold case team started, no one changed their stories, which is a good thing. DNA did not match on the man that they swore was him. I guess we all have a twin, huh? Um, now, I don't know whether the serial molester from Well actually did this or not. Um, again, he's endangered missing. He was a white male with brown hair, blue eyes, a scar on his forehead, and his nicknames include Chris. Chrissy and Christy. Okay. He was wearing a, a denim blue Levi's jacket with United States Army patches on the arms and pockets, a multicolored t shirt, and a blue colored pants. I think that's important because that's very unique. And he is considered the prime suspect in the case, this James Crom Cromwell. I just don't understand if he murdered a child in 1967, why was he out to do it again in 1997? Cromwell is believed to have more victims and might be a serial killer. In February 1967, Frank Clausen was abducted as he rode his bike in a trailer park in Drexel Heights, Arizona. His bike was found the same night as he disappeared. In the morning, Frank's strangled body was discovered by a police officer searching for him. He was strangled with his own belt. Frank managed to break away from his kidnapper for 30 feet until being recaptured and killed. Um, Cromwell lived in the trailer park with his partner, Stephen Schimmer. Schimmer? Um, they left town five days after the murder, so his partner damn well knew what he was up to. He said he killed the boy because he heard people yelling and calling his name and he was afraid he would respond. Nice. Um, in 2000, June of 2012, Crummel, the crumb, took his own life by hanging himself with an electric cord. He was never charged with Charles' disappearance, but again, he remains a suspect. Um, and they want it to be noted that Charles and Jack Phillips are the only presumed victims of Cromwell that remain missing. And then, they believe he might still be alive, that Charles' uncle believes that Charles is still alive, and moved in with another family with the help of Dennis in 1979. 
In 2015, investigators thought, again, they might have found him in Colorado Springs. The DNA said, nope. Um, he was very shy. He wouldn't have talked to a stranger or willingly got into a vehicle with a stranger. We know this. And his parents did not believe he would have wandered off. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, this poor kid. You might think one of his parents hit him away, but even if that was the case, when he was an adult, he would have come back, you know, and, and sought out the other parent, hopefully. Um, I think that, anyway. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Um, again, we're trying to get to 500. We're halfway there, guys. Over halfway there, actually. Um, by August 4th. That's lewd. Um, I'm uploading today's videos for the other channel. <laughs> so, I'll see you next time for what should be a long case, but hopefully you can get through it pretty quick. Um, so I've noticed people don't like long videos. Although, I like long videos. Uh, so, I'm not sure what the problem is. Am I boring? <laughs> Please let me know. Um, Thank you for joining me. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye, guys. -bye,